Hi there, this is a video on asymmetric information, information failure, uh, microeconomics. So we're going to spend a few minutes, if it's okay with you, walking through the famous paper by Akerlof, George Akerlof's theory of the market for lemons. So what is the market for a lemon? Well, a lemon is a dodgy, defective, used car. Now, here's the data on used car sales in the UK. And you can see that the market has been growing in 2021, the year after the pandemic. Over 7.5 million used cars were sold in the UK, up from 6.8 million in 2004. So millions of second-hand used cars, used vehicles are sold every year. If you just think about the contrast with the sales of new cars, you can see that the car market in the UK is dominated by uh, used vehicles. So the number of new cars sold has been falling recently. Uh, it obviously dropped in the pandemic, but it was only 1.65 million in 2021 compared with 2.3 million in 2019. And when people are choosing uh, a car dealership in terms of uh, uh, which uh, dealership they, they select when they're buying a new or used car, here are some of the respondents' reasons for choosing a particular dealership. Location of the seller, online review is important. Uh, finance op opportunities and deals, past experience is important, available stock of cars, so for servicing and reputation, uh, the expectation this will be haggle free. So those are the key ones. But out in front, what do you think is missing there? Well, it's price. So price remains the dominant uh, sort of motivation when choosing a dealership in 2023. Now, let's go back to the mid early 1970s, an Akerlof's famous paper, The Market for Lemons, Quality, Uncertainty and the Market Mechanism. So George Akerlof, who got a Nobel Prize for his work in economics, produced a very famous paper, and you can Google it and find out more if you want, on asymmetric information in markets, where the buyer knows more than the seller, or the seller knows more than the buyer. And in this case, I guess it's the latter, isn't it? The seller of a used car probably knows, knows more than the buyer about the quality of the car. Now, Akerlof's paper was trying to explain why markets might deteriorate or even collapse when asymmetric information uh, is, is embedded, it's persistent, and also, crucially, the economic cost of dishonesty. So the key idea here, I'm going to ignore the maths. You can take the maths, uh, if you want, by, by accessing the paper. But in this market, the seller knows more about the quality and the history of a used vehicle than the buyer. And therefore, buyers independently cannot accurately always tell the quality of cars available for sale. So they might be going to a showroom. There might be 50, 100 cars available with a price on the front of the windscreen. But the buyer cannot be expected to accurately assess the quality of a car available for sale. Hence the information asymmetry. And the theory says that as a result, buyers will tend to offer an average price for all cars. They'll have in their mind a sort of, um, you know, a mean price for the cars available. Now, that is typically, not always, but typically lower than the seller's perceived value, particularly if the seller has a good car. So let's say a seller thinks they have a really good used car, maybe just only lightly driven for a year or two, and they want to sell it for £15,000. It's their minimum reservation price, but the buyers are only really offering, I don't know, £12,000 or even less for a car. So buyers, because of the risk of purchasing a lemon, will typically lower their, their offer price, lower than the seller's perceived value. And as a result, the theory goes that some sellers will then remove their good quality vehicles from open sale. Well, that means that the average quality of cars left in the market falls. And you can see here, there's almost like a doom, doom cycle on its way. If the average quality falls, buyers will therefore, um, again, they won't be willing to offer average prices. They will reduce their uh, offer price. And it's almost like a cycle of doom, uh, a death spiral. If so. This increases the risk of the market disappearing. And the reason is because of an information asymmetry. There's an information gap. The buyer cannot independently assess the quality of the vehicle. Akerlof's theory of lemons. It raises an interesting question. How can you overcome? How can you get around this information problem? In all second-hand markets, not just used cars, but in many other 
resale markets. Well, lots of different ways. And of course, what happened in the 70s and the 80s is that uh, car manufacturers responded to this because if there's no uh, active, reliable, uh, trustworthy market for second-hand cars, it becomes harder to sell a new car. Because part of the reason for buying a new car is that you think about the resale value two or three years down the line. So you need a, a well-functioning second-hand car market for sales of new cars to remain robust. How can you overcome the lemons problem? Lots of different ways. I'm sure you can think of other ways from the ones I've put here on the slide. You can offer, and they do, obviously, extended test drives for potential buyers. Have the car for the weekend or go, go drive the car for uh, a couple of hours. Really give people an extended test drive option to see if the car fits their, their needs. You might require or expect a full service history, including all the MOT test logs, to be available to the potential buyer. I've had a car now for 12, 13 years. I think I've kept most of the MOT test logs. I know that if I have, I'll get a better price than if I haven't, because at least I can give some information to the second-hand car dealership. Extended warranties to lower the risk of purchase. A warranty, of course, is a form of insurance. Uh, if the car breaks down within the first six months, three months, six months, a year, for example, a warranty might cover some of the costs of repair. That brings down the risk of buying a lemon. A mandatory cooling off periods so that you might be given a chance to take the product back uh, and that's to help avoid buyer remorse. Uh, and of course what we've also seen happening is a lot of the car companies now provide extensive pre-purchase diagnostic testing using skilled mechanics. So the likes of Cinch and Kazoo and others, there's been a growth of um, uh, uh, sellers, retailers in the market they, you know, they provide I don't know, 100, 200 different tests of vehicles before they make them available for sale. And don't forget the role of the internet, social media. So we talked about a little bit in the past about how, um, uh, how that can happen. Uh, trust, reliability, reputation, all important. So review platforms can help to improve trust between buyers and sellers. There we go. This was a quick look at the market for lemons, in particular, Akerlof's very famous paper. If you want to go through the paper itself, it's widely available on uh, through Google, uh, JSTOR, for example. It's a great paper to read, and it's one of the most historic papers in the whole of economics. Take care. See you soon.